All right, we have Creighton head coach Jim Flannery and student athletes Jalen Agnew and Sydney Lamberty. We'll go ahead and start off the press conference with an opening statement from Coach Flannery. Well, it was. I thought it was. I thought it was a great game. I mean, uh, to, I'm sure it was to play in. I thought it was a great game to coach in. Um, Iowa. We're familiar with Iowa because we scrimmage them, and and so and obviously they're familiar with us. So there was. So there were things that maybe they were a little more prepared for than if they're playing somebody they don't know and some things that we were a little bit prepared, maybe more prepared for. So um, anyway, uh, just Gustafson obviously is a great, great player. Um, and uh, we did, we helped a lot and she still had 29 and 17. So that gives you an indication of, of how good she is. These two, these two to my left were, were decent today. I thought they... Um, <laughs> I thought they were, I mean, they were fabulous. So um, I think I used that word in the locker room too, didn't I? I got to come up with a better word, but fabulous just kind of hit me. Um, you know, it, this, this is a great feeling. I mean, when you're, when you're sitting uh, last Monday, right, um, five days ago, and we're sitting in, in, our, um, in our kitchen area in our, on our campus, and we're not knowing whether we're going to get in the NCAA tournament, um, and spin it forward five days and, and feel what it's like to play in the NCAA tournament and win in the NCAA tournament. It's just there's, there aren't too many feelings like that. So, um, you know, e even though these two were terrific, it's, it's, it's still always a team game. I love our team, our chemistry, the fact that we've got everybody plays a role, and, uh, to, and you need that to beat a great team like Iowa in the NCAA tournament. So um, we're going to play another familiar foe, a little bit familiar, uh, because we did play UCLA. So um, what a great challenge that'll be, and, and, but, but also what a great opportunity. Questions first for student athletes. And go Big East, Pam. Uh, Sydney, congratulations. Uh, midway through the fourth quarter, you had four straight possessions where you scored. Uh, how critical, obviously, was that, and what's the mindset at that point? Because it's such a tight game. Well, I wasn't even aware I did that. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I think, uh, I mean, my teammates were setting up really good uh, plays for me to get the ball. The posts were setting really good screens. Um, it was kind of just like an overall effort. Like, there's no way I could have gotten the shots I did without them making the plays that they were making as well. Uh, Jalen. You seem to come out really strong in the second half. Uh, I think you got a quick basket and then a three and somewhere something else early. Uh, was that part of a plan or did you just see some opportunities? Um, yeah, I think just the opportunity came to me. Um, he had some good play calls. <laughs> but um, yeah, they just kept saying be confident. And so yeah, this opportunity came to me. Okay, uh, Sydney, for Sydney or Jalen, um, what did you learn from scrimmaging them earlier this season that you were able to use this afternoon? Um, something that stuck out to me was definitely their transition. We got hurt by that in the scrimmage, and I thought that they only had a couple points off of transition this time, and I think that really helped us. Um, and then, I mean, Gustafson is, we knew that she was going to be important in this game as well, and she had a really good game, but we just knew we needed to shut down um, their other players on the perimeter and kind of let Gustafson do, do her thing. And I think also um, we don't play anyone like them um, in the Big East, and so kind of having to think back to that preseason game or preseason scrimmage and um, just kind of remember, remember how they play. Yeah, it feels awesome, and we are really excited, you know, because um, in the scrimmage, I don't think we didn't we didn't beat them right in the scrimmage. Yeah, and so <laughs> making sure, but um, yeah, so we were really excited with that win. Um, he said, you know, enjoy it today, but then um, we got to think ahead um, to Monday. Any other questions for student athletes? Um, for either player, what was it like coming? 
a long way to travel um, and play the game. I mean, was there any uh, issues with the difference in time or um, just being out here? I think we're just super excited to get out here. Um, warm weather and none of us have been here before. We didn't know if we were going to get in. So I think there was just a lot of hype going into it that I don't think it really affected us. Hey, ladies, I just wondered how you prepared to, with the different, completely different styles that you both play, how do you, and you're going to have to turn around and do it again on Monday, how do you prepare to play teams that have such opposing styles as you do and maybe you're not as familiar with? Um, I think just our coaches did a really good job of um, giving us like defensive assignments and scouts and um, just like really abiding by that and focusing on that. And then, um, I don't know, I think just getting a feel within the first like couple of minutes how how they're going to play and how, like, how we play and see um, where we can um, be positive. Venice Beach. <laughs> oh. Venice Beach. Um, their coach said that you guys were able to play, uh, you know, 30 seconds of a possession and take the clock down. Um, was how did you how did you manage to do that without worrying too much about the shot clock going off or not getting a good shot? Uh, that's just kind of our style of ball. Um, that's just we usually use up a lot of the shot clock and try to work to get the best shot. I mean, you saw sometimes we really wind it down and have to wait for the last second shot, which always doesn't work in our favor. But that's just kind of how we play. Yeah, so it made some. Really good plays there at the end. That fadeaway jumper was sick. Any other questions for student athletes? All right, we'll go ahead and dismiss them. Thank you. And we'll have uh, questions for Coach Flannery. Uh, Coach, uh, you made eight to ten free throws down the stretch in the last minute and a half. Obviously, that's a key to any win, but how critical for, for you guys today yeah, was that? Yeah, we, and we missed a few before that. I mean, it felt like we, we split a few two-shot opportunities before that. Um, so, yeah, it was because I, I, I thought Iowa was smart. They went, they went for quick twos, you know, when the game was, you know, at eight-ish, you know, six-ish, they went for quick twos. Um, and, you know, we didn't want to give up threes, so they just kind of elongated the game. Um, and, and fouled, um, which, uh, like I said, I thought was that was smart because a lot of times people will just start jacking threes. Um, and when you've got somebody as good as Gustafson where you can go inside and get a quick two, because um, at that point we weren't going to trap uh, the post as much. We were going to let them get two. So, so that, that made it more important that we hit the, hit the free throw. So we, we downsized at the end of the game and played – played a smaller lineup. We took our five off the floor the last couple minutes, and as I felt like that'd make us a better, you know, just a little less likely to turn the ball over um, and make sure that we got two free throws. And, you know, in our game now with with five fouls, two free throws, it is a little, you know, I think psychologically it's a little easier when you when you step up there and you know it's not a one and one It's I'm getting two no matter what. And, um, but still, credit to our players um, for doing that, because we had some younger players who did that too, not just our are more experienced players. You guys held Iowa's starting guards to, I believe it was five for 22. Um, defensively, execution-wise, what was kind of the key to make sure that nobody else but, but Megan really, um, you know, went off or anything sure. like that? Well, we, we had studied enough, you know, just looking through box scores and, and kind of figuring out when they struggle. Is, is it... Is it when they don't get as, when they don't get three? You know, so our focus was to some degree was to take threes away from civilian and Meyer. Doyle doesn't shoot as many; she can make threes, but uh, she's probably a little bit more drive than shot. But we didn't want uh, civilian and Meyer to get threes, and I thought we did a good job. Um, I think Meyer got one, um, but I thought we did a good job on those guys because at some point, you know, I, I felt like uh, Gustafson might get a little tired. Um, and miss some shots that really never happened. But uh, you know, our 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 goal kind of was to to help off of of their fours, off of Coley and Stewart, 
and uh, and make their make their fours make perimeter shots. And to their credit, they uh, Stewart made some perimeter shots, um, but uh, you know we just didn't feel like we could guard Gustafson one on one. But we were we didn't want uh, particularly civilian and and Meyer to make threes. And then and then I thought we did a good job on Doyle. So when we scrimmaged them, we had uh, we had Sydney guard uh, Doyle more so and and so we did switch matchups and put Jalen on her because Jalen's just a little longer um, and I thought that Jalen did a good job of playing kind of spacing off of her but also making you know making things difficult when she put up the ball on the floor because she's just got a little bit more length than Sydney and then we slid Sydney over and played her on Meyer so that was an assistant coach's suggestion not mine so I'm not going to take credit for that Coach, this is an interesting game statistically. I believe they were le uh, you guys they were leading you at the half shooting percentage and rebounding percentage. They did out rebound you, um, uh, got more points in the paint than you guys did. What made the difference for your team, and, and how were you able to um, close out the window on the stretch? Sure. Well, we knew they were going to get more points in the paint than us. That was <laughs> we don't ever get more points in the paint than than anybody, and and uh, not. We knew that wasn't going to be the case today. I thought, I thought, you know, these guys were deflecting praise, but they made great, strong plays at the end of the shot clock. And that was your question earlier. I thought, I thought both of them did. I mean, and 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 Sydney, you know, made probably one lucky shot where she was falling to her left with a half a second left on the clock. <laughs> okay, that's. But I just thought that they really made strong. Those two really made strong plays offensively at the, at the end of the shot clock and um, that little spurt that Jalen had at the start of the second half. But then I thought, again, Sydney just made really tough plays. I thought Civilian did a good job on her and played her physically. Um, but I just, I loved how, how strong she was late shot clock. Because, um, you know, as you mentioned, we're, we're a slow team. We're in, in terms of pace of play, I think we're in the bottom 5% in the country. <laughs> um, but that's kind of who we have to be to be the most successful. But if those two don't make the plays, they did. Jalen got to the foul line. Um, but, you know, those two were just were huge with, with late clock plays. And, and um, but, yeah, we, we knew we weren't going to, you know, and, and I don't know what the difference from the, th from the three-point line was, but they only had maybe three. Um, but we, we, we knew we had to make more threes than they did. Um, can you just talk about the momentum shift at the very end of the second quarter and then leading into <laughs> halftime? And then, yeah. you know, how important was that for the rest of the game? Yeah, I told them at halftime that we were the, uh, as of today, we were the best end of quarter team in the country because we, we got that shot at the end of the first quarter and then we had no business getting that shot up, you know, no business really getting that shot, that layup up at the end of the half. So those are those are big plays. I mean, just from a how do I feel about, you know, how do I feel about the way we're playing? How do we feel about the way we're playing? But, I mean, I thought those were those were big plays because we, we gave them one. I think it was the end of the second quarter. We gave them one, and then in less than six seconds, we got it back, and Jalen hit that layup. So, um, you know, and we work quite a bit. You know, that's one of the things I love about the women's game now that we got the quarter is we – we do work more on end of quarters because it's it's more situation. You know, there's just more opportunities to be situational. Um, so I think it's I think it's a, a part of the game that we've kind of embraced is this, how do you do at the end of the quarter because you got you got you know three opportunities through the first 30 minutes and in the past you only had one. That's you know that's somewhat significant. Um, it seemed like. Um even though they had 12 offensive rebounds to your 10, it seemed like for most of the game, your, your players did a pretty good job of boxing out. Yeah. Um, is that typical of your team? Um, when we emphasize it. <laughs> um, we're a pretty good defensive rebounding team, certainly not a, not a great or an elite defensive rebounding team, but we, part of it is like I said, we're not a great transition team, so it's not like we're trying to, we're not trying to rebound with three and and run. We 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 keep five in to rebound, and we and we also know that with certain matchups, you you know you do have to block out, and then you have to have your guard guards peel back to rebound. So we talked about that. You know, Meyer and Civilian um, 
really don't offensive rebound, so we needed guards to peel back and and uh, you know then just be more physical with their posts. So we're 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 okay. We're not we're not great, and obviously Monday that's going to be ginormous. Um. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, looking ahead to Monday, uh, how can you? What kind of plan can you come up with to stop Canada and UCLA? You don't have one for me. Um, she's a little quicker than anybody we have. You know, when we, and I'm not going to give away what what we're going to do, but we actually played them triangle and two, um, and then their coaches will know that. So I'm not giving away what we did the first time, but we we played uh, the day before, so we had essentially no, and, and we. We played, we played them in a stretch where we played them on a Saturday and we played, a, um, we played Sunday, double overtime on Tuesday, and Friday. So it was our fourth game in um, whatever, six days, Glenn, thanks. It's really seven. But um, seventh day, seventh day. Um, <laughs> so we didn't, what I'm saying is we didn't have prep time and, and we were, a little, you know, we were fatigued, so I just felt like, you know, and I've never played a triangle in two, not, not in my life, so, but I, you know, as, a, as we looked forward and kind of decided what the week needed to look like, we, it was in our mind that that was maybe something we needed to do. Um, so we got to decide if that's what we're going to do again. But at least, you know, from a, you know, we may play it some, we may play it a lot, who knows, but... Um, I do think that there there is at least a, um, a, a a roadmap for maybe what we can do, and, and obviously we will try to adjust some things if we do play them that way. But but rebounding obviously will be huge. Uh, containing Canada, like you said, I mean we just felt like that maybe the triangle would plug her driving lanes a little bit more. And then we got to take you know we got to take risks. I mean you, we're not gonna we're not gonna beat UCLA if we don't take a risk or two in terms of how we. How we both how we defend and how we play on offense, but probably more so how we defend, um, and and that's just the reality of it. So, because they're bigger and stronger and faster than we are. Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, I mean, UCLA has been among the top teams and in, in and around the top ten, but what kind of attitude can your team take because they have played them already and yeah. maybe they're not you know 12 foot monsters or something right for sure I think I think the fact that we you know the game was 72 to 63 we we led at the end of the first quarter we were down one at half we got us they had a stretch in the third quarter where they where we turned the ball over a lot and they I thought defensively they kind of changed the game with their with their strength and their length um, but you know, I think over the body of the game, our our players know that we were right there. But I mean, that's that's also basketball. I mean, you watch some of their game today, and they're up thirty to twelve, and um, it looked like it was going to be get away from American. But to their credit, so I mean, we'll we'll emphasize what what happened today with with American. You know, we know that they're going to have stretches where where we're going to feel like, geez, what can we do? Um, but we also know that it's it's a 40 minute game, and you just got to be disciplined. And they're going to make they're going to make some shots that, that we've done as much as we can, maybe to contest. And 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 they're going to make things difficult. You know, I think they do a good job of mixing defenses, and and their pressure will be something that we'll really have to address because they they'll they'll mix up how they pressure. So we can't turn the ball over. I mean, that's the other part is we can't have, you know. 16 to 20 we've got to be we're we're a 12 turnover game team and we got to be close to that to have a chance okay. thank you coach thank you